Audi's A7 has always held a very unique space in the luxury segment because it's a sportback, as Audi calls it. That means it sort of has a hatch coupe-like design, which is really interesting. Now, they gave it an RS version in the first generation, and now there is a second generation 2021 Audi RS7. Now, this car is joined by two other very similar RS-powered vehicles. You've got the RS Q8, which is an SUV, probably going to be the best seller of the three. And then now you have an RS6 Avant wagon. And I'm very happy about that one. But today we've got the 2021 RS7 and I'm gonna show you what it's all about. So let's start with an exterior tour of the RS7 where everything is based on Audi's A7. You've got the A7, then you've got the S7, then you've got this, the RS7, the flagship of the bunch. Now, this is radically different on the exterior. In fact, only the hood, roof, and tailgate and doors are the same as an A7. Everything else is going to be different. We actually have wider flared wheel arches here on the RS7, makes this guy an inch wider than a standard A7. It's lower, it sits lower on air suspension than the standard A7 as well. We've got these gorgeous matrix LED laser headlights. They are absolutely phenomenal. They do these really cool lighting animations when you, when you unlock the vehicle at night. It is really cool. And we've got a carbon optic package. It's about $6,600. And what it's going to do is it's going to black out pretty much everything. You're not gonna see an ounce of chrome on this car. Black Audi badges, black RS7 badges, carbon fiber, lip down here and as we come to the side of the vehicle you're going to see even more stuff that it adds. So we got to start here with the wheel. You get 21 inch wheels as standard but because we have that carbon optic package we've got these awesome two-tone 22 inch wheels. Now you can get this wheel in a single tone as well as part of a black optic package but I think the carbon optic package is the way to go. These wheels look so gorgeous on this car. The tires almost look painted on. They're absolutely gorgeous. Worth every bit of the $6,600 price that you pay for that package. Package. Now behind that, we've got Audi's red carbon ceramic brakes. Those are a $9,000 package. You can pay $8,500 if you just want to get them in gray, but I think the red looks fantastic. Now that is a 10 piston. Yep, you heard that correctly. 10 piston caliper. It's actually the same one that you get on the Lamborghini Urus and the Audi RS Q8. These could stop a Mack truck. Now the rotors behind them, those are 17.3 inches in the front. Those are larger than the wheel on my Ford Fiesta ST. That's absolutely crazy. Now coming down the side of the car, we're gonna see more elements of the carbon optic package. We've got carbon fiber mirror caps. We've got black accents going down the side here, and we've got some carbon fiber down here on the side skirt. No chrome on this vehicle whatsoever. Finishing off here in the back, we can see this super wide stance that's afforded by that wide body. This is a sport back in Audi's lineup. So it has this sloping coupe-like roof line that tapers down to this flat rear end. You do have a spoiler here that pops up automatically at 60 miles an hour, or you can deploy it manually on the touchscreen. I love manually deployable spoilers like that. Because we have that carbon optic package, black Audi logo here with a black RS7 logo right there. We've got this really awesome taillight bar that stretches across the vehicle. Just really adds to that width, that low stance that this car has. Just like the ones at the front, it does an amazingly cool animation when you unlock it. It looks very much like a Cylon from Battlestar. Galactica. Now down here, that carbon optic package is going to add carbon fiber all the way down here on the rear diffuser. And we've got the signature Audi RS ovular exhausts. They're shaped like ovals and boy, oh boy, they are not fakes and they sound fantastic. All right, so now let's hop inside the Audi RS7 where just like the exterior, we have an interior that is heavily based on you guessed it, the A7. Um, so we have a very minimalistic cabin. Audi is doing these very simple, but also pretty luxurious cabins lately. And you can tell that this is an RS via a lot of different ways. We have this perforated steering wheel with an RS logo here. We've got some red accents here on the starter button as well. We've got this beautiful carbon 
carbon fiber finish. And I'm not usually a huge fan of carbon fiber in big, heavy cars like this, but this is one of the best applications I've ever seen of it. You can see there's no finish on this carbon fiber. It is completely bare. It feels like I'm rubbing my hand on like a wicker basket or something like that. Very, very cool. Audi does extremely premium materials everywhere. We've got this nice sort of aluminum. We've got leather everywhere. We have an extended leather package on here. We have these Valcona leather RS seats, which for the first time on an RS7 now have heating and ventilation. You used to have to step down to like a basic A7 seat to get ventilation here. I'm glad that these finally have ventilation built in. Now you don't get massage on these seats. You have to step down to a more basic seat to get that. So Audi's still keeping the weirdness in terms of seats there. And now let's talk briefly about the infotainment system. We've got a 10.1 inch touch screen. This is Audi's Touch MMI. I really like this system. It's very easy to use. We have amazing graphics, just like on the head up display, we have this amazing Google Earth imaging for our navigation, which is fantastic. We've also got some beautiful ambient lights that we can control here. I love how the Quattro badge over here lights up, which is really cool. This is where we can control all of our drive modes as well. We have our RS monitor here where we can view um, a lot of the things in terms of our uh speed and stuff like that. Now we can configure our RS, RS modes here as well on the Audi drive select. So if I come here, I can program my RS1 and RS2 modes. So you can control the drive, suspension, steering, engine sound, and the Quattro sport differential here. And you may notice that as I'm touching these, you kind of have to, it's hard to see on camera, but you have to put your finger on it and then you have to click a little bit harder uh, to make it work. And that's so that you don't accidentally like bump into things. Um, it's kind Kind of nice. Some people don't like the way that clickiness feels on their finger. You can deactivate that as uh, if you want. And we also have this 8.6 inch lower screen. This is where all of your climate controls live. You can do things like up the ventilation and fan speed here by clicking, or you can slide up and down as well. This is a little bit distracting um, compared to having normal buttons, but I think it works pretty well because of that clickiness that I was telling you about. And of course you can just hit the voice commands and tell it that you want the temperature to be a little bit higher. And the thing I really love is we've got these amazing cameras here when I put it into reverse, amazing 360 degree cameras. We also have this cool 3D view. Look at that, that looks really awesome. Although the car is not the right color, I should know. And something really interesting about this is when you turn on your turn signals, look at that, it actually comes on in real time there, you can see it in the rear. So that is a really cool function, really great technology here from Audi. The only thing I'm not crazy about in this cabin is we've got amazing cup holders here. They're very grippy, they work great. We've got a volume knob with a skip and all of that, so that's great. There's just not a lot of places to put like a phone here on the dashboard. For that, you have to go into the center armrest. There is a wireless charger in there, but I will say this armrest is at least really nice. It does slide forward and you can height adjust it if you have a a little, if you're a little bit taller or shorter and you need this to be lifted up a bit. Next, let's focus on the Audi virtual cockpit. I think this is one of the coolest elements of any Audi interior. We've got this massive 12.3 inch screen that acts as our gauges here and it is highly customizable, not quite as customizable as Mercedes does it, but definitely more customizable than BMW and a little bit more self-explanatory than Mercedes. Mercedes gives you maybe too many customization options. So here on the left, we have our short term memory, things like that for our fuel economy, but I can change that. I can have it showing my audio. I can have it showing my phone information. I can also have it showing a map. And if I click view, I can now get a full Google Maps map that is really nice, really great to see that. And as you can see, we have a very specific RS style gauge here. It's this sort of hockey puck tachometer. It's very cool, but you can go ahead and change that. If you go in to the main screen, you can change uh, the different settings on here. So you can have normal gauges, or if I click on my RS modes, you get this really cool runway style. You can see instead of fuel economy, we now have a G meter, there's other stuff you can get here under sport displays as well. So you can have lap times, acceleration measurements, things like that as well. It, the only thing I don't love about this gauge is that it goes down instead of up. I'm not really sure why. So you can see as I floor it, the tachometer goes down. That's a little bit strange. And if I click view, you can have your G meter and stuff like that front and center with the tack and everything speedometer pushed to the side. But these are really cool gauges that I think are very nice to look at.
So as we open up the beautiful pillarless door that's part of the whole Sportback experience, we're gonna see the first issue with the RS7 Sportback, the first area where it doesn't really shine, and that is in terms of back seat, leg, and headroom. So leg room, we've got about 37 inches. That's fine, it's just okay. Headroom is where you're really gonna have a problem because of this very sloped back roof line. Now, I'm only about five foot nine on a good day, but my head is just about touching the ceiling there. Taller occupants are not gonna be that comfortable back here. You're gonna to wanna to go for either the Audi RS6 Avant or the RS Q8 SUV to get a bigger back seat. Now, these seats are very bolstered. They almost feel like you're sitting in the front bucket, so that's kind of interesting as well. I tend to like that as well. We have a very nice center armrest here with storage and some cup holders. We also have air vents here in the center console and here on the pillar as well with our very own climate control screen so we can control that dual zone. It's quad zone for the whole car. And we have two USB outlets to charge up our devices back here. So back seat space may not be this car's forte, but the Sportback excels when it comes to trunk space. Sportback for Audi means sort of like a hatchback. They call it a Sportback because it sounds a little bit better. But as you can see here, this is not a conventional trunk like you normally get on like an A6 sedan. This is more like a wagon and the storage space is absolutely massive. You get 24.6 cubic feet of space back here. That dwarfs anything you're gonna get from the competition. The M5 has less than 19 cubic feet. The M8 Grand Coupe has even less than that. Even the AMG GT, which is also a hatchback like this, is not quite as big as this. This is absolutely massive. The only way that you're gonna get more than this in one of these cars is if you go for the RS7's wagon equivalent, the RS6 Avant. That has about 30 cubes back here. But I, if you're not into the wagon, I know some people just don't like the way the wagons look. I think the Sportback offers plenty of practicality and just wait until you see how big it is when you fold down the rear seats. You could fit an entire meal back here. So now you can tell your spouse that you guys don't need an SUV. Now, before we get it out on the road, I wanna do a deep dive on the engine because that's such a big story here with the RS7. We've got a four liter twin turbocharged V8 with a hot V configuration. That means the turbos are mounted inside of the V of the engine that gives you much better throttle response. We also have a 48 volt mild hybrid system that's really gonna increase the throttle response, give you better stop start, all of that. We've got really great numbers out of this guy, 591 horsepower, 590 pound feet of torque, not quite as much as the BMW and Mercedes are making here, but it is just enough power to launch you from zero to 60 in three and a half seconds and onto a top speed of 155. But since we have the carbon ceramic brakes, we also have a raised top speed to 190 miles per hour. All right, so time to find out what 591 horsepower going out to all four wheels feels like. We're gonna start with the launch control. I have it in RS1 mode. Put your foot on the brake, floor it for a couple seconds. It'll build boost and launch. Ready? Launch control active, go. Oh, there we go. Yes. It just keeps pulling hard. Oh my goodness. It does almost sort of like a four wheel burnout at the beginning. It does this really crazy back squat where you just feel the back end of the car squat down. The front end lifts like an airplane. It's really cool. It's, it's unlike any other launch I've been in in a car because I've been in launches that are more savage than that. I've been in some that are like more immediate, but this just kind of surges forward. Very cool. Um, in its sportiest setting, this eight speed automatic rips off ships. It's fantastic. There are paddle shifters here on the wheel, but I have left it to its own devices to basically just do whatever it wants. It's fantastic all on its own. And I mentioned that this is a 48 volt mild hybrid system and a hot V turbo configuration. Now that means there is barely any turbo lag on this car. It is so immediate, the surge of power when you want it. So we are mid corner now. I'm gonna go ahead and squeeze the throttle. And there we go, we're quick. As soon as it downshifted, we were off in a huge hurry there. This thing is so immediate. It, it really just develops power in a crazy, amazing way. 
And the 48 volt mild hybrid system is great for practical reasons too. It, you know, it handles the stop start. It allows you to coast. It just improves the overall smoothness of an, of this engine in a way that makes this not just an amazing sports sedan, but an amazing luxury cruiser as well. Now we've got all of our power going out through a quattro all wheel drive system with a sport differential. 40% of the power by default is going to go to the front wheels. 60% is going to the rear. So it is a rear biased all wheel drive system on this car. And it can optionally send as much as 85% of the power to the rear. And if you are pushing this car at eight or nine tenths or even 10 tenths, you're gonna feel that 85%. It almost feels like a rear wheel drive car when you're pushing it around. It kind of nudges the car. It has all wheel steering as well. So it really just helps this car shrink around corners. It really does just grip to the road like a baby or a cat, like, you know, running on carpet without its claws trimmed. It's very cool. Uh, the, the dynamic all wheel steering also makes it feel much more nimble in parking lots and things like that. Just really helps this car feel very, very nimble. Now, the suspension is where I really want to talk about the RS7 because I think that is this car's greatest attribute. It is more comfortable than its competitors from AMG or BMW's M division, like the M5, the M8 Grand Coupe, the E63. I think this beats them all in comfort. We've got a five link front and rear suspension with air suspension and controlled damp and I have it in its RS setting right now. I'm gonna go ahead and put it back into its comfort setting. It rides beautifully, even with these massive 22 inch wheels. I think the comfort and composure of this car and the quietness of the cabin is definitely top of its class. So if you put a little more emphasis on how drivable and how comfortable your big executive fast saloon is, I think this is definitely the one to buy. I think you are going to enjoy this more than the BMW M's and the Mercedes AMG's of the world. That being said, there are some areas where this isn't quite as dynamic as those vehicles. For example, both the AMGs and the M's offer a rear wheel drive only mode where you can do big burnouts. This unfortunately does not have those. I think the AMG and the M are both a little bit louder. This makes a really nice, very throaty exhaust note, but it is very low, very growly. I'm gonna go ahead and put it in its RS2 mode so you can listen. It does a very nice burr, burr, pop on the, on the shifts, but it is not loud. It's not obnoxious. That's not really what Audi likes to do with their RS cars. They like to make it growly and sonorous, but not obnoxious there. And the steering, Audi does very light steering. And I actually prefer light steering. I think BMW is way too heavy in their M cars. This is actually the right amount for me. And I've driven a bunch of A, you know, A6s and things like that. And I love the steering. It's very precise, but I thought it was just a bit too light. I think this gets it just about right, but it doesn't feel quite as connective as I think Mercedes does right now. So I think those are just going to engage you a little bit more on the steering. Although I should say this is extremely natural and this has really reset my barometer for what Audi is capable of in terms of steering because I like the A branded cars and I'm okay with the S branded cars, but this steering is really what I would want from an Audi car. So I think when you're really really pushing this car, going all out, like if you were on a racetrack, I think it's not the one in this segment that I would really want. Now the 10 piston brake calipers on this on the front, these are I think the best brakes I've tested in this segment. You can slam on these things and it will bring the car to such a screeching halt. In fact, why don't we try that? now. So I'm going to bring the car up to some speed. We've got nobody behind us here and oh, 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 yes, those brakes are absolutely fantastic. So I really do love that. I love the RS modes. They really do change the characteristic of this car. And then when you put it back into its comfort mode, it settles down and becomes a nice competent cruiser of an Audi. The, you know, you can even shut down this engine. This will shut down to four cylinders, you know, using the mild hybrid system and it'll get you okay fuel economy, 15 in the city, 22 on the highway, 17 combined. I've gotten 
nowhere near those numbers because I'm having just way too much fun driving the car, but it is it is just a really competent luxury cruiser. Um, we've got just so much to enjoy here that I really would consider, if I'm doing mostly highway driving and I never plan to take it on the racetrack, this may be my new favorite in the executive saloon segment. So that was the 2021 RS7 Sportback. Pricing starts at $114,000. With all the options that you've seen on this car, it's about 135 grand. Now I should note that the RS6 wagon, which is the one that I personally prefer just because I love wagons, is a little bit cheaper starting at $109,000. Now this car, as I mentioned in the open, occupies a very interesting spot in the segment. It's a little bit more expensive than an E63 or an M5, but it is less expensive than a BMW M8 Grand Coupe or an AMG GT63. Again, very interesting middle ground. And I think this offers practicality that none of those offer with comfort that none of those can match. So in that respect, I think the RS7 is a really unique option. If you aren't so much about track performance and you're more about how comfortable it is on a long distance journey on the highway and you prefer trunk space over back seat space, I think the RS7 could be for you. We really hope you've enjoyed this review of the 2021 Audi RS7 Sportback. For more videos, like it, be sure to hit subscribe and the notification bell. That's the only way you're gonna be alerted when we post brand new videos. And check us out on all of our other social media platforms as well, including Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and even TikTok, where we have short, little, fun, digestible videos, including videos of this RS7. I'll see you next time.